All right, I did it, guys. Excuse me. I set up the mic beforehand. I'm so proud of myself. Welcome, everyone. I'll let the viewers flow in for now. Um, excuse me. So I'm excited for today. We're gonna be working on collisions, um, just menu interfaces. I guess yeah, menu interfaces. Uh, we might if we might have time to go into like image, how to add in images to replace some of your 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 features. Uh, other than that, yeah, we're just gonna be cleaning up the game or the 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 thing we made in general. <clears throat> Oof, I'm exhausted. I've been uh. <sighs> Uh, I'll be honest, I'm really thirsty and forgot to bring a water bottle in here, so before the stream starts, I'm gonna go ahead and grab water. I'll be right back. Exciting. Hello, uh, Mukesh Solanki, and hello, Kirk. No, I'm not dead. Uh, I went to grab water. <clears throat> so yeah, again, uh, we're gonna work on more processing. Uh, I hope you guys are following along, like maybe doing this as well, because you get to play around with uh, the different variables or. Uh, the the shapes I guess you gotta alter that however you want uh, and uh, you guys can put your little twist or your little variation on it and uh, I think today after we, we learn really just more about game mechanics in general uh, that'll help you guys add in your twists or your little uh, variations okay should I go over to see if you <laughs> I'm very much alive. Don't do not worry. Okay. All right. Uh, my internet connectivity is not as smooth as it was last time, so we'll see how this goes. <sighs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to day eleven of Java coding, and right now it's processing coding. Uh, today we're going to be working on adding, uh, I guess, uh, collisions, collision detection, and any other uh, little bits that we want to add in, like menus or game over signs. And so, you know what, uh, let's not waste any time, let's just hop right in. <clears throat> so I have my code here, uh, you can see that it still runs. Uh, you ha we have our little Flappy Bird game from last time, but you notice that uh, it doesn't have any game over. Wow, I am horrible at this game. Uh, it doesn't have any game over, over signs, and it doesn't have any points either. So we will, we will work on adding those two in today. Oh, uh, let me press the stop button, not the play button. <clears throat> okay, so uh, we have to go over collisions, and so I might have to draw some things on the whiteboard. Uh, let's do that right now. Okay, so what are we going to have to have? Okay, let's, let's draw our... Can I adjust this? Uh... Okay, uh, what are we going to have to have? This is our screen, right? And we have our our bird. Maybe that's too big. Uh, it doesn't matter. So how do we detect whether or not the, the little bird is inside of these rectangles? Well, um, we do a bunch of math. And it's just a bunch of comparison math. It's not that hard. So basically, uh, we can... Uh, the way how do you, how do you detect collisions right the the 
you know, first insight is say, hey, check every single point inside of this, uh, this circle and see if any of those points are touching any point inside of these rectangles. And obviously that's not very efficient. So what we're going to do instead, and uh, also uh, what we're going to do instead is a thing I call just point detection. And so uh, um, let's say instead of using a circle, we're going to give this a collider, right? Or basically how we're going to check it uh, com in comparison to the, these two rectangles. We're going to give it a rectangle. And that just makes uh, doing the math and checking the points a lot easier. And I will show you guys why. So instead of checking every single point, uh, on every single one of these uh, these shapes, we're just going to check the corners, or corner detection, sorry, not point detection. I call it corner detection. Basically, you check whether or not this point is inside of this box, which is relatively easy to do. You just do a bunch of comparisons. Then you check this point, this corner, and then this corner, and then this corner. And so we can get these corners really easily. We can get the coordinates for them really easily. easily. All we have to do is check all of them and see whether or not they're inside these pipes. So that's what we're going to be working on today. Now, uh, if you end up trying to do it with a circle, you're going to have to do some, you know, like trigonometry or whatever, or just basic uh, geometry. But uh, just using corners uh, is a lot easier. And the reason I use uh, corners uh, is because uh, as long as there's no turning of the rectangles, as long as the rectangles can't like rotate and form like diamonds, uh, <clears throat> As long as the corner is touching inside of it, uh, yeah, that, as long as the corner is touching, that means they're colliding. And so uh, it can't, as long as our rectangles aren't turning, there's no way for it, for this box to touch this, this uh, rectangle or square without touching one of the corners. I see if it's like this, then it can like pierce through. It can check here. Uh, and avoid, it can collide, but avoid checking the corners. But if it's uh, like another rectangle, it can't. <laughs> uh, collide with it without touching one of the corners. So we're going to check whether or not the corners are inside either of these two rectangles. Okay, uh, I'll leave that up for now. <clears throat> so, how are we going to do that? Well, first, let's add a function into our pipe. Uh, we're going to have each pipe return a Boolean value, a yes or no, a true or false, uh, whether depending on whether or not a certain point is touching it. So we're going to uh, define a new function. We're going to call it checkpoint. Not like a checkpoint. It's a checkpoint. You're going to get the float x, float y, basically the coordinates, and you're going to see if, whether or not that coordinate is inside either of the two pipes. And because this stores both pipes, uh, we can uh, use this. We can use this one function function to check check. Okay, so first let's check. Uh, what are the different values we're going to have to check? Uh, back to the whiteboard. <laughs> Alright, so... Oh, I have to do one more thing before we do that. Okay. Well, the one, that, one more thing I'm going to do is just... I'm going to go back to our bird class. I'm going to give it more uh, variables. Right now we only have a y, uh, a y value. That's the only thing that defines the dimensions of our bird. But I also want to have an x, uh, a width and a height. And the reason I want, uh, I, I, the reason I type W instead of width is because width defines the entire dimension uh, of the, the, the width of the screen, basically, the width of the screen. And the reason I want um, all these values is so it's easier for them to be passed into the pipe, or it's easier for our bird to remember. Uh, and it's also easier to change them. And what I mean is, uh, hey, <clears throat> when I give my, uh, when I give my bird an x, right, I'm going to give it uh, an x right here, and I don't want to change it. And I'm going to give it a width right here, and I don't want to change it, and a height. The only thing I'm changing is the y. And that way, when I print all these values out and I draw the ellipse, I could just say this dot x, this dot y, this dot y, the width, right, and this dot height. So, uh, yeah, again, I'm not changing the x width or height. I'm simply storing them inside of the bird, <clears throat> giving it those properties. Uh, okay, now now let's go into collision, right? So, uh, how do I check whether or not the pipe is, or how, how do I check whether or not a point is, in, point is inside of the pipe? Well, again, uh, maybe I didn't have to erase that. Alright, whatever. <laughs> we have our pipe. Oh man. 
Now, how do we check if this point is inside of that pipe? Well, we get, we have the dimension of the, of the pipe, right? This is its x value. What is this value right here, the other side of the rectangle? It's x plus the width of the height, uh, the width of the rectangle. What is this value right here? The, uh, we check all the boundaries. That's what I'm trying to say. We check all the boundaries and see with, if it's within those boundaries. This value is, we call this value, or this height right here, we call it space. Oh my. We called it space, which means this value is space plus space width. Space plus space width. <laughs> space plus space width. And uh, this is just height. So we have to check whether or not it's inside of all these boundaries. OK, uh, back to the code. <laughs> all right, I probably didn't have to have that be so visual, but uh, it, it's good for us. It's good for us. OK, so we're going to say, hey, is the x given us that was given to us, is it greater than uh, this dot x? Or greater than or equal to this dot x? So is it to the right? of this boundary, this line right here, if you can see, <laughs> to the very left line of the pipe. It also has to be greater, uh, less than the right side of the pipe, right? It has to be within that boundary. So that ha it has to be less than this dot x plus this dot width. And what this this sign here means is if you, if you don't remember the comparison operator uh, uh, episode <laughs> that, that day, um, and it, th this symbol means and. It means all of the, uh, this this symbol right here. Okay, yeah, this symbol right here and this symbol has to be true. Excuse me. Yeah, this operator and this operator have to return true in order for it to return true. Excuse me. So it has to be uh, to the right of the left side and to the left of the right side. Uh, and we define the width here, so uh, we don't have to worry about that. And now we have to check for the y. Is the y less than this dot space? Is it above this space, right? Or, yeah, I have to uh, put equal signs as well. Because if it's touching, we have to have it be a collision as well. So th yeah, this again, this isn't the most beautiful collision detection because it's very rough. Uh, I'm using corner detection on rectangles. So it's very easy for it to just bump into it uh, like a, one of the... Uh, to the pipes without w and the collisions like a little off it might it might like be a little a little rough but that's okay uh, so it has to be less than this dot space and it also has to be greater than uh, greater than or equal to zero yeah so it has to be yeah ab above it can't can't go above I mean uh, I don't necessarily have to put y is greater than or equal to zero because it'll always be greater than or equal to zero it'll always uh, we defined it earlier that it, it has to like be below the window. It has to base the, why, <laughs> this is just saying it has to be below the window. Um, <clears throat> so that's two, true, return true, right? It's touching. Now, if that's not true, now we have to check the lower rectangle. We have to check this rectangle. So the, the width and the X dimensions are actually the same. So we can just kind of copy paste that in. Uh, is less than this dot X plus this dot W. But instead of saying, hey, it has to be less than this dot space, it has to be actually greater than this dot space with, uh, with this dot space plus this dot space with, right? It has to be uh, greater than, if you remember, y values actually increase going downwards. So it has to be greater than this value, which is space plus space width. And it has to be less than, uh, less than height, just to keep things consistent. Less than or equal to height. You know, uh, we're checking all sides of the rectangles, of the rectangle. So if that's true, return true. <coughs> oh, what did I do wrong? Oh, else if. Sorry. <laughs> Else if and if none of those are true, which means it's not touching either rectangle, uh, return false. Uh, okay, so we have this check point uh, function. So now we have to ha uh, have this function check every pipe at every frame uh, for for the bird. 
<clears throat> how do we do that? We're back at our Flappy Bird, uh, the main class, right? The one that manages all this stuff. Now I could just say, I could check it all here. Say, hey, is, uh, is uh, the left corner of the bird inside of the pipe? Is the right corner of the bird inside the pipe? Uh, but I'm gonna just make a new function for our bird. Hey, uh, void, check, check pipe. Wait, I'm just gonna call it check, right? I'm gonna give it a pipe. Oh, okay, it won't be void. It'll actually return boolean as well. So, check. Yeah, I'm gonna call it check. And inside, I'm actually gonna give it a pipe. And what that means is, hey, I can just give my bird the pipe that I'm getting, that I'm looping through. I'm looping through all the pipes in this uh, function right here. So if I loop through all of them, I can give each pipe to the bird function and the, and the bird function will do all the work for me. I don't have to, we want to avoid making this file as messy as possible. And the reason you don't want to make this file as messy as possible is because it's a lot harder for other people to read if this file is really messy. So, uh, because it's the main file. So, uh, we're gonna say, hey, if, you know, uh, if pipe.checkpoint Uh, you know, I have to give an x and y, this dot x, this dot y. If that's true, go ahead and uh, return true. <laughs> okay, so why why can I just say here this here? This is giving me back true or false, which means, and all the if statement needs is true or false. Now I could have written if this equals true, right? But uh, that's sort of unnecessary because if this equals true, if true equals true, it'll give you true. If false equals true, it'll give you false. So <clears throat> we can just avoid that completely, and we're say we're saying, hey, um, is this returning? Uh, is this function that we're calling returning true? If so, give us a true and return true again. So <clears throat> that probably made no, no sense, uh, it, but it's good for us. <laughs> okay. Now you see I'm getting an error, and the reason is because our function isn't returning true, uh, returning a value every time. Boolean means it has, when I say boolean here, I'm saying this function has to return a boolean. So uh, we have to make sure that this function always returns a value. So uh, let's go ahead and check again. Hey, is if the, the top left corner, which is x and y, if that's not inside of the pipe, let's check the top right corner. Let's check the top right corner. And the top right corner is the x value, right, plus the width. The x value plus the width will give you the right hand uh, side. Yeah. Return true. And now, if that's not true, let's check the bottom left corner. Pipe dot checkpoint. Uh, so it has the x value of. Now, uh, I'm doing this very quickly, but uh, you can take your time and go ahead and visualize uh, what these values mean. This x and this y and what happens when you add to it. And I'm saying, oh, it's just the right hand side. If you can really visualize that for yourself, uh, that would really help you when you're creating games like this or applications in general. So how do you get the, the bottom left side? Uh, the height, the, the y value plus the height will give you the x coordinate of the of the bottom side. So, <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna draw this out for you, but for now, let me just uh, code it in. So, uh, now we're gonna have to check the bottom left corner. That's the last one. Okay, <laughs> come on, stop wasting time, Luke. <laughs> this dot y plus this dot height. So, yeah, that's the last corner. Return true. Now, if it's not touching any of those, we're gonna say else, return false. It's not, it, none of the corners are touching. So let me draw that out real quick. So we have our bird, right? Which has a width and a height. And usually uh, circles are defined by like a radius, but in part processing, the, we just say how tall and how wide it is. So it, it has the dimensions of a rectangle. So this is our X value and Y value, right? This is the coordinate we drew the, rec the ellipse at or the rectangle. This is x and y. And uh, this is the width and the height. The width and the height. 
So how do we get this corner here? How do we get the coordinates for that corner? It's just x plus y, or x plus width, uh, to get this side. And to get this side, it's y plus height. y plus height. And to get both sides, it's this value and this value. So yeah, just a little bit of coordinate geometry. Uh, coordinate geometry as in just adding up the widths and heights to coordinates. Wow, my hair is really messy today, but that's okay. <clears throat> so back to the code. Now, we created our chuck function. We created the check function for the pipe, whether or not a port was inside of the pipe. We created a check function for our bird, whether or not the bird was touching I any of the pipes. Now we just have to call it for every pipe. Hey, if uh, the, the game is over, or yeah, whether or not you failed, right? <laughs> you died, you lost. So let's create one more variable up here. We're just going to call it uh, boolean game over. And the reason I give it boolean is because game over will only have a value of true or false. Is the game over? True or false? And we're just going to define that up here. Uh, game over equals false. If the game is not over yet. <laughs> and if it's touching the pipes, we're going to say game over equals true. <clears throat> that way, uh, now our game knows that uh, the, uh, the game is over. <laughs> so what do we want to stop? Because the game, when the game is over, we have to stop some, some, some of the functions, right? We can't have you be able to jump while the game is over. So we're going to say, and not game over. Okay, again, this and means both of these have to be true. So if one of these is false, it's not going to work. Not game over means, hey, if it's not game over, and the, the exclamation mark, which is called bang encoding, if, uh, if the game, uh, it means not. The exclamation mark means not. So you can add, uh, it basically flips the switch. If you have a true, it turns into false. If you have a false, it turns into true. So I'm basically saying, hey, uh, in order to jump, you have to press a space bar, and the game has to not be over. Excuse me. So we also don't want to add pipes uh, when the game is over. We also don't want to update the bird. Now the and this is the reason why we uh, we have a update function and a show function. What if we want to freeze the bird in place so it's not uh, the gravity is not affecting it, but we still want to show it to the screen? Then we could say if not game over. And we're basically wrapping bird update inside here. We're saying, hey, only allow gravity to affect it if the game is uh, not over. Uh, where else do we have to add it? The pipes. We don't want the pipes to be moving if not game over. Uh, yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> that's all we have to do. And also, we're going to add one last thing at the very end to show us, just to make things clear, uh, when the game is over. So if, if it is game over, what do we want to do? We're going to say uh, there's a couple of functions that you can use to help add text to the screen. So I'm going to show you them right now, how to add text to the screen. This is amazing. You can say, uh, first, we're going to say text size, right? We want uh, the size to be around 16, just to keep it standard. Now, text uh, align. We're saying, hey, if I draw a coordinate, uh, if I, yeah, draw a coordinate for the text, I want the text to be centered around this coordinate. Otherwise, it would automatically align left. And what that means is if I divide the, the coordinate for the text here, it would write it out uh, to, the, to the right of it. <laughs> and you'll see what I mean uh, very soon. So center, uh, center has to be capitals. Now, um, in regular Java, you would not be able to use these functions. These are special functions that processing uh, allows us to use in order to help uh, making help to help make uh, adding GUI elements or graphical user interface elements, just image elements. It makes it a lot easier. And center is a variable that our uh, <clears throat> our game already knows, or our processing already knows. It's a variable that it's given us, kind of like width kind of like all the functions, like setup and draw. Uh, it's another tool that uh, processing gives us. And you'll see why I use it very soon. So we're, now we can just say text, right? When you say text, it takes in three things. It takes in uh, the string you want to say, game over, where you want to place it, the coordinate, and the, and the height, uh, the width of the coordinate and the height of that coordinate. 
or the x of the coordinate and the y of the coordinate. So I want it to place, be placed in the center of the screen. Now, a lot of that was very abstract, as in you can really see it in action. So let's go ahead and run the game. What did I do wrong? Oh, okay, I forgot parentheses. Okay, <laughs> I was missing parentheses. No? Luke failing again. I don't like he. Oh, okay. I sorry, I missed out on uh one of the one of the curly brackets. My bad. <clears throat> All right, so let's play a game. Game over instantly. Uh, I failed. So uh, one last thing. Oh. One last thing to make this a lot easier, we're going to say fill, which means when we draw something, we're going to give it a color. Uh, let's just give it red. RGB, more red means more red. <laughs> so, let's, oh man, I didn't even get to play. So it, it works. Uh, you can see that the collision is a little bit off because um, the circle is, is drawn differently than the rectangle that we're detecting, but it's close enough, and that's all we're going for here. And so uh, you see that uh, when I touch the pipe, I... I game over. Oh, uh, okay. Now, <laughs> the reason you don't see me jumping, ah, uh, it's because I'm really bad at the game. No, uh, it's because uh, I'm having trouble here. Okay. Because it's because my uh, my mouse cursor is not focusing on this. Oh, uh, okay. Look, I got this. I got this. Okay, I'm really bad at the game, obviously, but uh, <laughs> we're going to add in, uh, th th that's basically it, it for today. We added in collisions, and next time we will be adding in menu elements and the score. Uh, that's, again, thank you guys so much for watching. That was a lot of math. It was, it was sort of difficult. I went over it pretty quick. Ask me any questions if you need. You know how to contact me. I will see you guys very soon in the next video. Okay, comments. Why did you use two ampersands as opposed to like one? The stream freezes for like 30 seconds at a time for me. So I really hope you have, okay. Uh... <laughs> okay, so uh, why do you use two ampersands? Um, that's just, wait, hold on. Yeah, okay. Uh, in Java, uh, yeah, in Java, that's just the way uh, we write and. And the reason we don't use a single uh, and, or like and symbol or ampersand, uh, I, I, I kind of doubt it would work. And the reason is because one ampersand um, is typically used for a thing called bit shifting. So when you're dealing with a lot of just uh, a lot of bytes, just like pure data, just zeros and ones. Uh, you can do a thing called bit shifting, right? And you could check whether or not uh, a bit is zero or one. And so I, I, I would say it, it could work, but uh, it's safer to just use double and. Double and is used for Boolean values, right? To check between uh, Boolean values. Yeah, one, uh, <laughs> that, that might have sound like a bunch of gibberish, like, oh, bitwise shifting, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, that, that's actually a very common uh, subject used. Uh, in Java in general. So yeah, and typically just use two ampersands. Again, a lot of this is just uh, just syntax. Uh, it's just how Java is written, how the, they designed Java to be. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. As opposed to like one. Uh, the stream freezes for like, yeah, 30 seconds at a time for me. Uh, <laughs> the VODs are usually more high quality and that's another reason why I do the VODs. And uh, the stream is really for, uh, yeah, it's not meant to like be completely, absolutely smooth, uh, mostly because I want you guys to take your time to ask questions, think of questions, uh, just like you did. Uh, so thanks for that, Kirk. Uh, Luke, can you really call the game if you can't win? Hey, man. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, what I can do um, and what I'm avoiding, actually, and I'll explain to you why I'm avoiding it, is I can make the screen a lot bigger and I can make the, the width, the space width of the, the pipes a lot bigger for it to be easier for me and to be easier for all of us. And I can also make gravity a lot slower. So again, it's easier for, uh, it's easier to play the game. 
and the reason I'm not increasing the size of the screen is uh the way uh uh OBS works. And basically uh <laughs> I think the only reason is I'm too lazy to uh I'm too lazy <clears throat> You know what? Why don't I, do I do it right now? <laughs> okay. Okay. That's pretty silly. What am, what am I doing? Okay. Uh, I was gonna say I'm too lazy to like shrink, <laughs> shrink the window on OBS. Like, cause you can see in the, the 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 stream, like the game, right? You can see the game right here. But <clears throat> what am I saying even more anymore? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I can take make it a lot easier. Just by lowering gravity and all that stuff. Are we going to get like an embarrassing moment where one of your siblings, maybe, kind of doubt it. I've uh, I I set up precautions so that something of that sort would not happen. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you know what? Because you gave me that suggestion, I'm gonna do it right now. Wait, maybe I should do it in the next video. I'll do it in the next video. I'll, I'll, I will do it in the next video. <sighs> yeah. It's because if I showed you guys like a huge screen size, then it would, when I... Please do not, Kirk. <laughs> okay, are we going to get an embarrassing moment where I walk, I or Milad walk in and be annoying? Uh, please do not. I, I beg of you. <clears throat> but, um... If I define like a huge screen size, which I could do, uh, uh, I would like during the video or during the stream, I would have to manually resize it in OBS. And I thought that was kind of annoying, so I just avoided it. But now that you say it, and because it's, it'll probably help out uh, later on, I will pl work on, yeah, basically making it better. <laughs> that, that's simple enough. So, hey guys, half an hour passed. It's your break time now. Uh, I will see you guys in 10 minutes at 10 or 11, 10. So go ahead, uh, drink some water, uh, go to the bathroom, eat some food if you want. I will BRB.
<clears throat> All right, guys. I'm gonna turn us a little early to the stream, uh, earlier to the stream uh, than usual. So, uh, Kirk, if you're still here, still here. Uh, okay, I, I basically looked up the answer, right? And um, why we use uh, one, why I used two ampersands instead of one, and what the difference really is. Uh, what I mean by bitwise and logical or whatever, or I didn't say logical, but uh, two. Two ampersands is called logical, and one ampersand is called bitwise. Uh, what I mean by that is, uh, two ampersands or one ampersand it checks both sides, right? It checks it checks this is it whether or not this is true and whether or not this is true. One ampersand actually what it does is it checks the first the one on the left. It checks if that one is true, and if that one is true, uh, uh, it, then it checks the other side. If the one on the left side is is false, it skips checking over the right side. Because both of them have to be true, right? And so the reason uh, reason two ampersands is faster is uh, it skips checking the one on the right if the one on the left is true, or if the one on the left is false. So uh, that's why two ampersands is typically used uh, more often because it, it it's technically faster, uh, like like more less than milliseconds faster, but it it still is. So uh, that's clarification. Uh, as for the next lesson, we're gonna be going into. Uh, Hmm, what do we get? Oh, yeah, we're gonna be adding in uh, menus, right? And then I guess a score system. Hmm. I don't know about the score system yet. Because I don't know how checking is going to work. Hmm. Ugh. Sorry, guys, you're going to have to watch me just like. Uh, like just goof around. <laughs> um, okay. I think I know how I'm going to do this. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to day twelve. Oh man, uh, day twelve. It's crazy. We're on day twelve of Java or processing. <laughs> Uh, today we're going to be working on adding uh, a menu interface, right, and a score system. And after this, uh, basically all we have left is to add in any little details or uh, little drawings or animations or images that you guys want to add to our game to make it more aesthetically pleasing, obviously. So before uh, I work on anything, I'm going to actually do something <laughs> to our game before before anything. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to increase the size of the screen uh, because it just allows us to use more frames and such. So uh, the magic will happen. Uh, I will set it to, I think, 500 by 500. OK. Uh, the magic will happen where it's configured properly now. Okay. Oh my, that didn't help. Okay, so you guys get to watch me basically shrink this down. Okay, that wasn't that bad. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so uh, you'll see that our game's a lot bigger. And oh man, l look at the tiny bird. This is like in extreme mode. And so um, I did this just just to kind of show something. Uh, it's that <clears throat> uh, I guess um, processing isn't really <laughs> amazing at hand handling a bunch of graphics. You'll see that uh, also because my computer is slow, but uh, the screen is is lagging. It, it's lagging a lot, and so. I don't, I guess I don't really want to do that. <sighs> Never mind. Okay, I'm going to start this over. Okay, I'm sorry, Kirk. I don't, I don't think increasing the screen will really help out. I think maybe to 200 by 200. Okay, I'm going to find a good center. I should have done this over the break, but uh, is this, I think this is a good, okay, this is fine, right? Okay. Yeah, extreme mode actually is the same difficulty uh, as Kurt calls it. It's actually the same difficulty as normal mode. It's just that uh, extreme mode, I guess, <coughs> uh, you see more. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, okay, I'm going to give you more legroom. Okay. Maybe you should decrease the jump height. Yeah, okay. Let's do this together, guys. Okay. <laughs> Here, let me just set it back to normal for now. I think 200 by 200 is fine. Hello everyone and welcome to day 12 of Java coding, or processing now. Uh, today we're going to be working on, working on adding menu interfaces and the score system. And in the future, I guess all we're going to be working on left is details and a uh, little image, adding in images and uh, small small things like that. So let's get right into it. And before I work on anything, I actually uh, wanted to try. <laughs> I realized that the game was actually way too difficult, and uh, I didn't really like the settings. So I'm gonna uh, edit those lo a little bit, and I will show you guys uh, the effects just to make the game a little easier. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna increase the the size of the screen. This just this just gives us more leg room in, in pixels to do with stuff. And <clears throat> so you see now, uh, it's around this size. Uh, I think that's good. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease uh, the jump height. I realize the jump height is a little too extreme. It would shoot up way too quickly. And also, uh, because I increased the size of the screen, I can now increase the width and height by a little bit. Uh, and I'm going to make gravity a little less strong. This is just to make it easier for me because I'm, I'm not very good at this game. I want to make the width of the pipe a little larger, maybe twice the size. Wait, no, wait, man, it's too big. <laughs> Let's just try this out and see how... Okay, uh, I feel like... Okay, now gravity is too weak. Gravity is too weak and the jump is too strong. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. I will edit this little by little and I'll come back and I will show you guys the settings uh, I put together. Alright. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah, no, uh, Kirk, I redid the video because I didn't like how the first one went. So, <laughs> did I jump back in time mentally? No. <clears throat> um, I just redid the beginning of the video because I wanted it to just be formatted to where I can just say, Hey, I'm going to work on editing the these, the, the, these properties. Uh, okay, man. See, I'm not very good at this game, man. That, that's the problem. I'm gonna increase the space width too. Maybe to, maybe just give me lots of leg room. Okay, now I see. I think the jump height is too small now. I think it, since I doubled every, the the size of the screen, I have to double. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> maybe that's too strong. Maybe four is good. Is four like the golden number? You guys. Why isn't it jumping? It's glitching on me. Why? Okay. Uh, uh. Here. Um, 
maybe seven maybe seven the game was perfect where it was do you know this do you know the settings uh here if you coded actually keep it like this <laughs> is eight or Stop changing it. Was 7 or 10 better for the width, Kirk? There's going to be like a minute delay bef between me asking and you answering. But I'm willing to wait. I want I want this to be playable. <laughs> I'm glad you're you're actively participating, Kirk. Ah, that feels good. You don't remember? Okay. Oh, okay. The jumping. All right. The jumping part. Okay. All right. I can I can score like a four now. <laughs> That's like how how I, I've always been. I think the f five five is good then. I think five is fine. I'm just I'm just really poor at the game. Oh man, do you guys see that? It like glitched through. Oh, my detection is, is not very good. Ah, I feel like 5 is too strong still. <laughs> Why am I spending so much time on the stream just editing these little settings? 4 is a little too small. Ah! <laughs> I can't. You know what? Okay. I'm just going to make this a lot easier for myself. Okay, I think I'm gonna sparse the, or parse, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna parse the, uh, what's it called? The pipes more? I think five is, five is, five is important. Okay. I will get this one, one day, guys. I also feel like my gravity is, my gravity's fine, right? It's not too high. Okay, I think it, okay, it's fine. All right. You want me to check how much FPS? I don't actually know how to check it yet. So I will, you know, how to processing frame rate. Oh, okay. Okay. And I'm back. So, <laughs> I realized, wow, I am really bad at the game. So, a couple things I changed, or at least I went over, or I considered changing, uh, was, uh, hey, how many times do I want to uh, output the pipes, right? Uh, at, at first I was at every 50 frames, but I changed it to every 100 frames just to keep it smoother for me uh, Because I'm really bad at the game again uh, Another thing I changed or I consider changing uh, I changed the width and height of the bird to 5 and 5 because I basically doubled the size of the screen here size 200 and size 200 uh, I wanted to increase the the size of the bird a little bit just to make it more visible. I kept the velocity and the gravity the same uh, I kept the lift at the same, I think, as well, negative uh, 5 and 0 0.2. I felt like those were just smooth gravity and jumping heights. What I did change the most was I, I increased the, I doubled the size of the, the, uh, the, the pipes <laughs> uh, because, you know, um, because I doubled the size of the screen. I thought it would just look more consistent. And another thing is, this was, I think, at 25 earlier. That was way too difficult for my for my taste, right? You could change this yourself. Uh, you can mess with uh, these settings however you want. But uh, I changed mine to 75. I tripled it because uh, it just makes it a lot easier for me. So, uh,
and basically this is the game now it you can see how easy it is uh <laughs> you can definitely when you're making this if you are making this uh, uh change the settings so that it's a lot smoother on your part or maybe more challenging on your part because uh i was never good at this game <laughs> uh, but uh here it is in its current state uh, it's just easier for, for me to make uh tr keep track of score and stuff uh, so now that the settings are done, let's finally get into the, the core of the video, uh, adding in the menu. So, how do we do that? Well, how about this? And this is the, the process I usually go through. Uh, first, I'm going to clear out this in 3, 2, 1. Alright, stream viewers, you ready? You guys get to watch me clean. Okay, now that it's clean, <clears throat> uh, let's let's go over this. So how how can I uh, change between different like he completely different scenes? And I call them scenes because each scene will have a a new scene in it. So we can store that in a variable, an in integer variable. And basically, at each index, let's say uh, let's call this uh, variable scene, right? So we declare our interval, uh, integer variable scene. We'll start it at zero, right? Uh, so when it's zero, right, at the beginning of the game, we're gonna uh, we're gonna store that. We're gonna say uh, if it's zero, we're gonna display all this stuff, and if it's one, we're gonna display all this stuff. So it's just storing uh, what scene the game is currently on inside of this variable. <laughs> and I, I will just, I'll, instead of me drawing it with these silly squiggles, I will show you guys what I mean. So let's go hop into the code. Again, we're going to create a new in, uh, variable called scene. Uh, we're going to start it off at zero. Equals zero, right? Now all this stuff, all this stuff that has to do with the game, we're going to store, uh, we're going to put it inside of an if and else statement, right? And again, the if and else statement just checks something. So uh, we're going to check, hey, is scene equal to zero? And you have to use double equal sign when you're comparing thing numbers. We'll do this. If scene else, if scene, right, equals one, then we'll do all of this stuff. So uh, this because all this stuff is, you know, excuse me. Uh, a part of the game if you select everything you press tab it'll indent everything by one tab so that just makes things cleaner excuse me so all this stuff inside of scene 1 will store the game properties right the actual flappy bird and in scene 0 will store menu elements and I will already I've already showed you guys uh, how we can display text and such and and also I've showed you guys how we can detect key presses uh, we we keep background here because uh, we're not going to change the color of the background. So we're going to start uh, by saying fill 000. We're going to draw everything, our text and stuff in black. We're going to say text size. We're going to set that at uh, maybe 32 this time because we doubled everything. Uh, we're going to say text align, which means, hey, how do we want to draw our text? Do we want to center it in the middle of the coordinate or on the left of the coordinate? And then we're going to simply text. Uh, we're going to call this... Uh, Coding bird, coding bird. Yes, that's our game. Uh, with divided by two, height divided by two. And that's glorious. The reason we've been typing with divided by two and height divided by two this entire time instead of writing like 50 and 50 because that's the actual height of the and width of the screen, it's because if we ever change the height or width of the screen, it, this uh, code will change for us. Or yeah, our code is dynamic. And we're going to say one more thing. Press the space bar to begin. Uh, we're gonna say with divided by, well, not with divided by height. With divided by two, height divided by two plus uh, fifty. That just displays it fifty pixels below uh, the title. 
So we have that now. One more thing, I just want to configure this and uh, increase the size of the game over sign as well. So now we're going to have to edit our key presses. This only works when the game is started. So we should add an if statement inside of it. <clears throat> we're going to say, hey, if uh, scene equals zero, right? And they press the space bar. We want the, what we want to do is the scene to change. When, when they're on the menu, right? When scene equals zero and they're on the me menu sign, we want, uh, when they press the space bar, we want, we want the game to change into to scene one. Then, uh, otherwise, uh, if scene equals one and not, or, and not just, not game over, then we can have them jump. So that deals with that. Now our game works. Now the problem is when they hit game over, they have no way to get back to the menu. So we're gonna add a one more button press, right? Uh, else, or actually, yeah, else if key equals backspace, and this is again a special value that uh, processing knows what the value is, and this helps us it store what the value of backspace is. It stores a special number inside of backspace, and if you check whether or not the key is that backspace, it'll do something. So if uh, the key equals backspace, then scene. Well, actually, what we're doing is, hey, we're starting the game over again. And the best way to do that is actually to use this, these values right here. Oh. And if you, oh. And if you actually just use these values here, what we put in setup, which is, which is, the setup that started the game, whenever we press backspace, it'll start the game over again. And one thing I forgot to do here <laughs> this entire time is I forgot to set our counter to zero. Why does it? Why did the code work? Well, our when we say int counter, our computer actually in processing actually assigns the value to zero already. But we want to make sure that it's explicit. And what explicit means is we want to make sure it's very clear. It's we specifically say, you know, exactly say we want uh, the counter to start over. And uh, we want the counter to start over just because we don't want little lags or we don't want it to mess, uh, to basically, you just want it, <laughs> you want everything to reset at when you press backspace. And so the last thing we have to do is we have to say, hey, uh, when it hits game over, we also want to tell them uh, how to get back to the menu. Press backspace to return to menu with divided by two, height divided by two plus 50. So, let's check if this works. Man, that is, that is too big. <laughs> uh, here, let's not have text size be thirty two. Let's 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 keep it at sixteen. There's nothing wrong with sixteen. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> um, that's not very nice. What we can do instead is uh give these two values different text sizes. Instead of uh, text size, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Being 16 for both, uh, we change it halfway. We say for uh, text size will be 16, we print this out, and then text size will be eight, and print that out. And I'm gonna add that in down here as well. <laughs> I'm like making little changes midway, I'm sorry. Okay, so let's check this out. All right, that's kind of small, but you guys can hopefully read it. Press spacebar to begin. Now we play. Now we lose. And press backspace to get return to menu. Now the last thing we have to implement is uh, the score. And now actually, I will do that in the next video. And uh, the next video, I will also show you how to add in images instead. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Okay, so. I made a horrible mistake, guys. <laughs> I said I would add in graphical properties and stuff, which means I take in images. Okay, uh... <laughs> okay, Kirk. Ah, one thing, I can't, I forgot it again! Okay, uh, I've gotta, uh, do what Kirk said and add in the FPS.
Uh, I don't think it's necessary to the game overall. So just for your sake, Kirk, I will do it inside here. <laughs> here. Uh, all you have to do is... Uh, there's actually a variable stored in processing that stores your frame rate. So text uh, frame rate at uh, 10, 10. I just want it to be in the top left corner, just like 10 pixels out. So we're around 60-ish, right? Now when we start the game, oh, we keep it at we keep it at 60-ish. Now the reason you guys don't actually see 60 frames is because when I stream, I actually cut it down to 30 frames a second. And I'm sorry, I'm having your frame rate. And the reason I do that is because uh, otherwise I have horrible internet uh, problems. It, it, it sucks the internet out of my computer. So that's the frame rate. Uh, that's not really necessary. I'll get rid of that for now. Max it 150. Hey, uh, I'm gonna have to. <clears throat> uh, no profanity on the text channel, please. <laughs> I'm not gonna make it 150 frames. That's unnecessary. But yeah, it is running at sixty or basically sixty frames a second. Okay, so uh, let let's let's do this. If <laughs> why didn't I download more internet? <laughs> You're right. I should have used internet to download more internet. I'm sorry. Okay. All right, I'm gonna give you guys one more break, right? Uh, until just 11:40, and I will do my last lesson. Then I will see you guys very soon. All right, that was like a minute of break. It's, it's, it's all I needed. Okay. Ah, <clears throat> oh, man. So, <laughs> uh, uh, open source here. Hexos Rocket. Um, Pixabay. If you guys don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> I'm looking for images uh, that I can use. Uh, sure, this, this works. Uh, what the? Documents. Oof. 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 Rocket. PNG.
Hello everyone, welcome to day, I think, 13 of you know, processing and Java coding. Today we're going to be working on adding a score system and how to add images, just to finish uh, finish off you know, the, the tutorial. After this we will be working on uh, lots of other cool stuff. So <clears throat> this is our code, let's keep working on it. So how do we add in a score system? Well obviously we can store inside of an integer variable, right? Uh, score. We'll start the score at zero. Now, how do, how do we detect the score, and how is the score calculated? Well, the score, every, all we're going to do is say, how, hey, every time a bird passes a pipe, right, and only one time uh, when that bird passes the pipe, right when the bird passes the pipe, we're going to increase the score by one. So how do we do that? First, let's create uh, another function inside of our pipe function. It's going to be another Boolean uh, function. We're going to say passed. Yeah, and we're also going to give our pipe a variable. And the reason we want to store a variable inside the pipe, uh, we're going to say float or passed. Hold on, <laughs> sorry. We're going to name the the function check passed and passed. Uh, this is a passed is a boolean. Is because we want to make sure uh, our score doesn't just infinitely add. We want to uh, when we pass over. We'd want to set pass to true and then say uh, we can't add more if it's already passed it. Otherwise, we would add its score infinite, infinitely. So again, we're going to give a float x, a float y, and or actually, we only need the x value. <clears throat> if x, x is greater than uh, this dot x plus yeah, this dot, dot x, if that value is already to the right of the left side of the pipe, and uh, and not passed, we're going to say uh, passed equals true. So we're going to say, hey, uh, or sorry, not this dot passed. Oh. I forgot to sign it here, guys. That's really bad. All right, this dot passed equals false. It did not pass it yet when we first created it. So this dot passed. We're saying, hey, if it passed it and it hadn't passed it previously, right? We're gonna say this dot passed equals true. It means it finally passed, and return true. Otherwise, or else, return false. Now, someone asked me, hey, why do we use two ampersand size signs? Well, the, uh, why can't we use one? And the answer is uh, processing or Java, uh, when you write two ampersands, uh, when you write one ampersand sign, it checks the left side, right? And then, and it also checks the right side. It checks both sides no matter what. And uh, it calculates, you know, hey, is both, are both of these true? Is this and that true? When you use two ampersand signs, it actually checks the left side first. And uh, if it, the left side is true, then it also checks the right side. But if the left side is false, then it uh, uh, then it doesn't check the right side. It already knows that the answer is going to be false because one of them is false. So it's technically faster because it's it uh, half of it could skip over uh, checking the other side. It's it's a, a change in milliseconds of com computation time, but that, that could really help if you're doing a bunch of calculations. In our case, it doesn't really matter. We're just going to use the double ampersands. Uh, just get used to it. Excuse me. So now that we've created this function, now we have to create. Uh, now we have to use it. So inside of our check function that we used earlier, uh, we can also say uh, we're going to also create a different check function. We're going to call it uh, check point. Yeah, pipe pipe. We're going to say, hey, uh, if pipe dot check passed yeah check passed this dot x plus this dot with we're checking the right side of the bird as long as the right side of the bird hits the left side of the pipe and they pass then they get a point uh, this oh we don't need the y value if that's true return true uh, otherwise return false 
And again, why do I create the function function here? Why do I, I create it inside of inside of the oh yes. Oh, I spelled pipe. Am I on? I'm on caps lock. All right, beautiful. And I forgot a parentheses. Okay. Uh, why don't I write it right here? Because I could easily put it right here somewhere. But uh, again, we want to keep everything as clean as possible. We want everything that the the bird to calculate. We want to keep it inside of the bird class. And every time, uh, uh, we want you know to calculate anything else. Uh, we check it in this class. So. When we went through all the pipes, or hold on, well, yeah, when we looped through all the pipes here. Oh, okay, yeah, when we looped through all the pipes, not only do we want to say, hey, if bird check, we want to say, uh, if bird check point. Did it check point? Wow, that's really confusing. All right, uh, I, I, I named some of my functions very similarly and that they have completely different purposes. This checkpoint <laughs> checks whether the, uh, for the pipe, checks whether or not the pipe, uh, the point is inside of that pipe. This checkpoint uh, checks whether or not I should add a point. So instead, I'm going to call this add point <laughs> because otherwise it would be a little too confusing. So if I should add a bird point, right? Then I'm gonna uh, if I should add a point to the score, I'm gonna increase score by one. So again, and I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna pass through the pipe pipes dot get i. So again, all this function is doing is saying, hey, did the bird pass a pipe, right? It, it loops through every pipe and it get, it tells my bird, hey, check whether or not uh, you've passed this pipe, and the pipe has a certain function that says, hey, if this is the first time that the bird passes through or this certain point passes through the pipe, then I will return true. And ultimately, this adds a uh, point. And the last thing we want to do, the uh, very last thing we want to do is we want to text uh, a score to the screen, right? You could write this text uh, really anywhere. Uh, I'm going to add in a couple of, wait right here, maybe there's a better place to put it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, this is fine. Yeah, I'm gonna add at the end just to, you know, keep things in order. Uh, we're gonna say again, fill zero zero zero. I'm gonna make it black, or let's make it blue. Let's make it blue. <laughs> two fifty two. Uh, let's make it sharp dark blue. Uh, text size. I think like ten is fine. These are all really arbitrary, or it doesn't really matter. There's just a uh, personal preference. Uh, we can actually text a line uh, left, which is automatic. So we're going to print out score plus score. And that way, we actually print out the score, uh, you know. <laughs> and we're going to just print it like near the left corner, like 10 pi pixels out and another 10 pixels out. Let's see if this works. So we have our game here. Oh, it's actually green. Sorry, I, I did my thing wrong. Okay, well, I didn't even get a score of one. All right, let's try this one more time. Press backspace. Oh, okay, you see my score's updating. I'm getting a score. So one last thing, and I forgot to add this in. Uh, one more thing that I should add in. The second, the, the very, very last thing is, uh, I forgot. When I restarted the game, uh, I re I. I did the entire setup function again because I wanted to act as if, hey, the game's starting again. I should reset all my values. I forgot to, uh, I forgot to set the score to zero. So here's, yeah, I finished adding the score, uh, the score function, <laughs> basically to calculate the score and to, the, to display the score. Again, that's a personal thing. I we don't have to have the have the score in to act, make an actual game. Obviously, adding a score makes it more fun because you can compete with your friends. But there's one. Uh, it's really personal preference, and this episode is all about that. So I will show you guys one more thing on how to add in uh, more personal personalization, and this is images. How do you add in images? Well, I'm just gonna give our bird an image for now. All right, and this is how it works in uh, processing. There's actually a class, and if you remember what a class is, it's a blueprint for an object. So you can make. Uh, it's a blueprint. Uh, it's called p image processing image. So a p image is a class that creates image objects that store images. And the reason uh, we store images is because you give that image a height, a width, 
and uh, yeah, a high end width. <laughs> and uh, you can also display that image to the screen very easily. And I will show you guys now. But first, before you do that, you have to locate where your processing folder is on your computer. When you first downloaded processing, where did you put it? If you put it on your desktop, that's easy to open. Where And then where did you store your projects? We ha You have to locate on your computer uh, the the right here it says uh, the name of your file you have to locate where that file is located and locate the folder where it's located and inside that folder you have to put in an image right and I I, I guess you can basically get any free uh, stock photo images online and once you uh, have that image you take it and uh, you put it inside that folder this inside the same folder that this class or this file is in and that way you're uh, your your code will know where it is so because it's in the same folder it knows where it is now I will show you guys how to use it now I have an image on my computer right inside the folder with this file I have an image called rocket.png it's a free stock photo image of a rocket I'm gonna use that to uh, add it to my bird instead of drawing a circle so I'm gonna give my bird property an image property right sorry it won't be a fault float It'll be a P image, and I'm gonna call it image. Wait, IMG. Let's just let's just uh, keep it a shortcut. So I'm gonna say this dot IMG, right? I'm gonna give it a new value. And usually when you you create a new object, you say new uh, blah blah blah. But processing gives us a special constructor function, which basically says uh, a bit, which is basically a function that helps us make an image. And what it does is, hey, I say. Uh, if I write in load image, a function that processing knows, and I write in the name of my image file, rocket.png, it'll locate inside the folder that this file is in, of the file called rocket.png, and it will load it and turn it into an object that we can use. That's crazy. Uh, and that's all you have to say. And once you have this image, I will show you guys how to display it to the screen. So now when I have when I created this image, uh, if I tried to print it to the screen, it would print print it into the dimensions of the image, right? Uh, we don't want that. We want it to print into the dimensions that we say. So I'm gonna comment this out, save it just in case we want to use it later. And instead, I'm gonna use the image function. The image prints out an image, <laughs> this.img, and uh, with that image, it prints it to a certain coordinate. So I'm actually, uh, yeah, okay, one last thing, <laughs> uh, and we're going to, okay, yeah, we're going to print this to this.x and this.y. That's beautiful, right? You print out the image, right, the image object that is contained inside of this, uh, this, this object, this bird object, you're going to print it to these coordinates. Now, how do we change it so that this image is actually the size that we want it? There's a function that we can use inside of all image objects, right, the, inside of the class of, of, P image, there's a, a, a function called resize. We're going to use the resize function and we're going to change it to this dot width and this dot height. Oh, these have to be integer variables. Okay, I will show you guys how to do that. But what this does is it turns this image, right, into a new image that is resized to these, to this width and this height. And it has, uh, you know, these values, right? And it, it, it prints this out. It prints this image to this coordinate. Now the problem is these are float values. And uh, processing, and I think even, yeah, I think, yeah, processing has this special function called int. And if you wrap it around a float, it'll turn that float into an integer. So we don't, we can avoid like just subtracting the decimal point, and we can simply say integer of this dot width and integer of this dot height. So basically take the decimal and throws it away. Excuse me. Now let's try this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Obviously something went wrong.
So streamers, you gotta see me fail. I'm just testing. PNG. Oh my data. No. Oh. Maybe like ten, ten. Okay, so for some reason I can't get this to work. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm doing this right. Here. Come on, I just want this to work. <laughs> I want to be done with the lesson. Why is it not? Here. Okay. Wait, hold on. I'm not ready to go back. Uh, let's just change everything. Okay, guys, this is where we last last left off. Uh, so <laughs> I had this wrong. This is actually a, a void function. So it means it doesn't, I, what I mean is it doesn't give me back a new P image. All I have to do actually is I say uh, image.resize here and it actually changes the image object uh, and it resizes it to that width and height. So I don't have to put it inside, all, uh, put all that inside of this image function. All I have to say is print out this new image uh, after it's been resized. <laughs> so let's do that. Uh, you guys can see that is not the right screen. Why is that not right the right screen? Okay. As you guys can see now, uh, one more thing. Uh, actually, when you're creating, <laughs> here, hold on, action. Does that work? Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Okay. 
Come on, why? Why is it doing that? Oh, please. All right, so finally, let's get this, uh, let's hope this works. Okay, now you guys might not be able to see it very clearly, but that's actually the image of a tiny little rocket ship. <laughs> so you guys can actually, again, when you're creating this game, you can change the width and height to whatever you want, and that'll resize your image to however you want, how visible you want the bird to be, whether or not you want to actually put in a bird. But uh, again, that, that's how you put in images. You say simply a P, you create a P image object, and then you put inside of it a load image and the file name. And uh, you can resize the image by, by calling resize. And then you can uh, print it out by saying image, uh, the name of the variable you're using for your image, and the coordinates. Uh, th this, is, this episode was all about customization. Uh, and I hope you guys uh, can, can use this, this knowledge now to add uh, cool things to your game. Maybe you can change the pipes to pillars or uh, you can, instead of printing rectangles, you can print, yeah, pillars or something exciting. Uh, that's up to you. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Okay. Oh my, why did I? <laughs> okay. So stream, uh, that was a long, lengthy, intense stream. Uh, I want to appreciate you, uh, uh, appreciate you guys. You guys really helped me out. Uh, for the couple of you that stayed the entire time. Uh, this episode was exciting. We got to do a couple of customizations, really just game mechanics, collisions. Uh, the essence of game making. And eventually, I guess for the next one, we can come up with an app idea. We can come up with an animation idea. I'm not exactly sure what to do yet uh, or what to do from now on uh, because we co covered the majority of uh, the curriculum I designed at the beginning. And I also realized we only have really, I think, two more weeks. Yeah, two more weeks of this, of this lesson. So I think next week I will basically wrap, basically wrap up any uh, anything I want, <laughs> anything else I want to add to this add to this game, anything any other project I want to make, and then on the last day I will sort of do a con conclusion uh, stream. Basically, um, all my plans and uh, how I'm planning on improving. So uh, again, thank you guys so much for watching. For the couple of you that stuck around the entire time, uh, that's mad respect. And uh, that was exciting. I hope to see you guys in the next stream. Peace out.